Hello everyone and welcome to the, today's exhibition match replays for today. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer, and we have starting out a match between Dan Warrior and Thirksy on Sertalina. A map which may seem familiar, it is in fact Alien Desert with a fresh coat of paint. Actually, it's not a fresh coat of paint, it's quite a bit of a redesign for some of the hill areas too. Now you're going from sort of just an abstract raised gray section to being pretty complete mountains, to be honest. This is very impressively done. Not sure who put that together. My guess is that the Behera through Moose is loose, but yeah, well done. Not to mention the sand also gives me normal mapping going on, giving it really good dune-like look. That is normal mapping, right? Yep. Yeah, really well done. Looks beautiful. Anyway, Dan Ware going for jump bots, and... Thirksy going for rovers. For a map like this, I kind of favor the rovers. I'm well, curious what he's actually being built here. Puppies for Dan Warrior. Makes sense as a bit of a scouting force. Though, honestly, I'm, again, not entirely sure how that's going to work in terms of distance. Sorry, tanks for Thirksy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to work for distance. I mean, when I think about it, the... Oh, cleverly done there. Backup radar, just in case. But yeah, the Thirksy, they just have the speed advantage now. Yes, tanks are a little bit slower than the higher higher tier units, but they're not that much slower than the lower tier units, and they are considerably faster than the jump bots, so I don't know how this is going to work in terms of map control for Dan Weir. Thirksy starting out with a bit of an advantage just from factory comps, for factory pick. I mean, there is, of course, the fact that Dan Weir can build up a bit of a slower game and just gradually push forward and... Not to mention, moderators will slow down basically everything that the tanks throw at them. So this is going to be a more defensive game for Dan Warrior, but, you know, played well with enough overdrive and making sure not to lose terrain or territory as it captures. They should be fine. But early game, Thirksy is definitely going to have an advantage. And we're seeing already now with Thirksy just consistently raiding in on Dan Warrior. Dan Warrior trying to find some way to get damage done. Nicely done with those puppies, taking out one of the Kodachis, another one remains, but still, proof of concept, gets rid of Kodachi for half the cost. So, solid value from Dan Warrior. Thirksy, however, continuing to expand while Dan Warrior is mostly focused on getting power up, which, again, I can see, and I'm not sure if they're doing it for the overdrive. I feel like they're just doing it because, I mean, you need power. It's not a bad idea. It's, like, it is necessary, so yeah, that makes sense. However, I also think that Dan Warrior might be doing it because of the fact that, well, they are going to need overdrive. I mean, that's just, when it comes down to it, considering the matchup, Dan Warrior is going to have to rely on overdrive to make sure that they have the ability to actually build all the things, get enough stuff, get enough resources, get enough metal. Thirksy just has the advantage when it comes to map control. And that advantage is starting to spiral out of control. Thirksy, the only thing working against them right now is the fact that they don't have a lot of energy. And the only thing working for them in that respect is that they don't have enough build power, which is soon to be rectified. So right now, Dan Warrior is... Just, oh, okay. Throwing down a little constable, slowing down the Kodachis. Not a bad idea. A little iffy with the puppies, though. Unfortunately, puppies having a much harder time. The two puppies that managed to get in, somewhat lucky, honestly. And I'm surprised we're sticking with puppies here. Moderators do make sense, but they're way down the build queue right now. As do placeholders, but again, quite a ways down the build queue. So I don't know why Dan Warrior hasn't gone and canceled this out yet, but yeah. Oh, Dan Warrior putting on chat that they they remember this game. And it, apparently the strategy was... Well, we were seeing now already, Thirsty is managing to get all the metal. And they just have to get all the energy, which they don't have. Actually, they're going to be accessing metal pretty badly pretty soon. Where the heck is... Do they really not have any solars? No, they have no solars planned. Danwer, on the other hand, does actually have some stuff planned, but... It's not as relevant. Again, thing for them, honestly, is just overdrive. Building solars around, trying to just... Construct a whole thing with the overdrive, just to make sure that there's at least some kind of connection between metal extractors. But trying to deal with the Kodachis running around the map is has been an absolute thorn in Dan Warrior's side. Which again, it's kind of lucky for them that Thirksy has not been building enough energy to keep up. And another constable coming out here. Which is 
all good, but again, the moderators moderators are going to be the real big thing. That, that's going to be the big deal. When the moderators come in, that's what's going to make a difference. Although, Commander comes in, takes out the Welder. That is pretty much the only forward expanding force from Thirksy right now, so all these metal extractors, their days are numbered. I mean, granted, there's an Ogre coming in with a couple Kodachis that's going to help defend, but still, placeholders are coming down, as are moderators on top of that. This is a good combo to deal with the, t the tanks. Again, it's a highly defensive combo, but that is how Dan Warrior is going to be playing. Is that's that's what they chose to play when they chose to play this factory on a map like this. I mean, bot factory on a flat map, especially jump bot factory, which doesn't have a huge amount of fast raiding units. That's what they went for. That's that's what they chose, and that is. It's not like it's not working as a concept. It's just. It is something that has to be built around. I feel like they're not really going that defensive. Uh, the placeholder moderator built two minutes ago would have been much more effective. The puppies, really after the first Kodachi kill, the puppies had, and even prior to that, the puppies were having a bit of trouble. But definitely now, last two minutes weren't the best for the puppies. They, uh, Yeah, placeholder moderator earlier on would have been a great move. Still, there's the placeholder coming in there, taking at least two of the Kodachis away from their group. Well, will it be long enough for the moderator? Tough question. Of course, the problem is that the moderator is out of position. Constable, able to jump away. Should be able to survive that. Same time, though, Dan Warrior's commander. Not particularly on the ogre, but the ogre is putting quite the dent in that commander's hull. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't over target. Oh, lost the ogre. I mean, still got a metal extractor, but a second ogre coming around the side, being much more successful than the first. And now the placeholder moderator, I mean, the combo's there. Again, it's all about area denial. That's the whole point. Thirksy is not going to be, sorry, Dan is not going to be winning a straight-up fight because Thirksy isn't going to engage them in a straight-up fight. The point is that Thirksy is going to be fighting them just by raids because they're playing the faster factory. And that's what Thirksy is doing. So Dan Warrior right now, they're doing okay. Unfortunately, due to lack of energy, oh, they have energy stored. It's not the worst thing in the world. Still though, Thirsty's commander is in a bit of an awkward position. So there's that. But again, that's not the main. That's not the main problem. The main problem is going to be this ogre over to the north, and to a lesser extent, the ogre over here. It's lots of that is ready to help fight that ogre, so it's not as bad. So unfortunately, one of those things is the placeholder, which is currently on reload. Everything is currently on reload. This is why I said it needed to be built two minutes earlier. Placeholders and moderators both have a very high reload time. And that means you want to have as many of them as possible to make up for that. Fortunately, that is not currently the case. And I don't think that's ever going to be the case. Dan Warrior just hasn't been building all that much into that hasn't put much build power in the factory. They haven't, again, put that much time into building moderators and placeholders. And that is it. That army is down. Southside has been wiped out. And this is looking quite grim for Dan Warrior. A couple moderators over to the north have been helping take care of that ogre that was flying around the map, but it's just so much more that Thirksy has been throwing at them. Because honestly, Thirksy just hasn't been losing anything. And all of Thirksy's forces are way lower alpha. So the moderators just don't have the numbers to deal with what Thirksy has set up. And unfortunately, that's all that's being built. I mean, honestly, Jax wouldn't be a bad choice either. In fact, Jax, would, considering they cost the same as Ogres, would actually be a really strong choice. Like, placeholder Jack moderator would be a good combination, because then the Jax would meet shield from the moderators. You wouldn't need as many of them. Dan Warrior now, though, is just struggling. They have some reclaim coming in, but they just don't have, again, the energy for it. It's all done to energy, and again, Dan Warrior, like, honestly, building solar collectors all along here, that, to me, would have been the thing to do. Because that way you get the overdrive. And to, and also, you make sure you get loads of energy, so when reclaim comes up, you can use that immediately. But Dan Warrior didn't go for that at all, and I do kind of think those puppies were a bit of a waste. Still, Starting to see some of the army get built up. Placeholder. Placeholder moderator is an option. Is an option. That is working. Especially when you have the lotuses nearby. 
So that's something. The numbers are starting to come up. It is... It is becoming gradually a game that Dan Warrior can actually compete in. Oops. So I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work for Thirsty though. Cause, I mean, it's, like I said, Thirsty has a lot of rating potential, and these ogres could pretty much just stomp what Dan Warrior has built up. But they aren't really coming in force. Thirsty right now, what do they got going? They have Konashi Ogre. And now it looks like that Kodachi Ogre army, they're trying their luck, and it should work out pretty well. That Stinger against nine Ogres coming in there is not going to last. Well, okay, seven right there, but still. Dan Warrior's commander also in a desperate position right now. Might be able to kill off one or two Ogres, but they are going to go down immediately. Their days are numbered. How do they take down one ogre? Second ogre goes down. Third ogre is probably not going to die before the commander does, and down it goes. Commander death, that north side is completely open. Thirksy has free reign of the north side of the map. Dan Warrior, unfortunately, not able to go around to the north to really protect that. And again, this is why I suggested building a lot of overdrive. Because when you got to hold back, when you got to be more defensive, overdrive is your friend. And ironically, Thirksy is one of the higher overdrive just because they've built all their power production and great lines and just one metal extractor too. They haven't even linked up any others, but still, with enough power, that is a thing you can do. But yeah, Dan Warrior honestly would have just, if they'd gone for the placeholder moderate a bit earlier and thrown in some jacks, I think they'd have been fine. And then just built up a bunch of power plants all in the back. Use that to link for overdrive and then use the overdrive to make up for the fact that the terrain isn't quite as available. The Scuttle is coming in. With the placeholder, it's a solid combination, actually. I mean, the Ogres can't move, so as long as the Scuttle doesn't get spotted, as long as the Scuttle moves in and attacks, though, that is a necessary component of this whole thing. Okay, it's coming in. There's the jump. And... Ogres down! Five Ogres down for one Scuttle. I'll, I, two Kodachis, too, as well. Beautifully done. Thirksy losing their entire army. That was over two. That was like twenty-two hundred metal worth of units down to a single scuttle. Dan, where you're finally getting some room to breathe here, thanks to that assault. Unfortunately, it's going to be short-lived as Thirksy remains well ahead economically. But it's something. I and mean, again, the constable here, they could, they could reclaim stuff. More importantly, they can build up metal. It looks like they are going for the reclaim, though. I mean, good idea. I don't know, Thirksy's going with the reclaim. My bad. Not Dan Warrior. I just, like, Dan Warrior hasn't built any power since these, these wind generators, and that's just not how you play this game. You need energy badly. Yeah, Dan Warrior mentioning thing that Jax wouldn't work. No, the point is, Jack placeholder. The Jacks aren't there to attack anything. The Jacks are there to stand in front of the placeholders and moderators so the placeholders and moderators attack everything. That's the whole point. You're just trying to keep the moderators alive. Because that's your main damage force. And the placeholders keep them in place, as the name suggests. That's the whole idea. Basically, everything else either gets too close, like pyros and puppies and whatever gets too close and gets hit. Or it gets the one shot and that's it. But with jacks, like, if they approach... If they approach to attack the moderators, the jacks will be able to attack them. That's the idea. But again, the bigger thing is just, honestly, numbers, and that just comes from the lack of energy. Because this could have been all along here, just power, just solar planets all along for the overdrive. Because again, Jumpbot is going to have a much harder time grabbing and holding territory against tanks. Than the tanks are against the Jumpbots. That's just how it works when you have a slower army. So with that... Looks like Dan Warrior is just getting cleaned up. The placeholder is going down. Thirksy... Got what appears to be their closing army. Another scuttle is under construction. That will help, but at this point, Dan Warrior is so far behind, they have basically no power production, largely because the wind generators are currently slow. The wind is currently down. But that's not really the problem. The problem is that Dan Warrior just didn't have the power plants to begin with. So with that, looks like Thirksy is just about to... Stomp into Dan Warrior's base. Nice spread, too. Use, good use of the line move there to make sure that if Scuttle happens, which it will, it won't do that much damage. 
Oh, Dan Warrior pointing out that they're quite tilted. I guess they've been playing earlier games. And so that, that makes sense. Yeah. Being tilted does definitely make it harder to play the game. Not going to deny that, but I am going to point out that it is... That is, like, for future reference. Just playing this lower army, Overdrive is your friend. That's the whole point of Overdrive. So that if you don't have as much territory, you're still able to stay into the game. Whereas, if you are playing this faster army, you don't need it as... It's handy, obviously. But... Getting more territory is going to be the bigger focus. And here comes that final army. Looks like it is going to be at the scuttle. Trying to find a target to work from. But it's not. Damage is one of the Kodachis that takes it out. But effectively was disarmed. And that is it. Danware throws in the towel. And Thirksy takes it. Nicely done by Thirksy. Looks like overall Thirksy. Yeah, there's an income advantage the entire time. Metal use was pretty even up until the mid game. Reclaim Denware had the advantage on excess. Thirksy actually was doing kind of iffy on that. Denware had a pretty good spot for that until the very end of the game. But yeah, Denware can never quite get the army up. Constantly losing more units than their opponents, so that was the thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, because that's right. Thirksy actually ended up accessing a lot early on, hence the gap between production and use of metal. But still, Thirksy has one in attrition. So yeah, that's that was yes. This was the first replay for tonight. Next replay is going to be between ah, who is it? It is going to be between Reposter and Dave B on or Dave Dave the clan is TB, but Reposter versus Dave on Fallendale. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment. Oh, Dave the Brip. Oh, that's who it is. Oh, okay. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. That explains the TB. Not a clan symbol. It's Dave the Brave. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Did not realize they renamed. So yeah, Reposer versus Dave the Brave on. I guess I'll call him Dave for now. On Fallen Hill. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a couple minutes.